This is, sounds simple, but it could be like a tragic ending to your vacation. Hello everybody, it's Taylor, and today I'm sharing mistakes to avoid when you visit Universal Orlando Resort. It's first thing in the morning. We're starting over at Universal Studios Florida, and my first mistake to avoid is do not visit the first attraction you see when you enter the park. So at Universal Studios, that's despicable me. I would not go there first if I, I were do. you. He clearly hasn't watched the video, uh, but you don't want to go to the first thing you see because that's where everybody else does. It usually has a higher weight earlier in the day, midday, and even end of day, Despicable Me is usually a lower weight versus first thing in the morning. So I would avoid going to the first attraction you see. Let's go to the next mistake. Another mistake to avoid is making sure you know the refurbishment schedule for the attractions before you arrive. So if you go to the Universal website or our Orlando Informer website, you can check uh, and see if your favorite attraction is going to be closed for refurbishment or closed forever. Um, I would just keep that in mind. Of course, I wouldn't reschedule a trip because of that, but I would want to know in advance so you're not disappointed when you arrive. For example, Revenge of the Mummy just closed for a pretty long refurbishment. Uh, it reopens in late summer and then Shrek 4D just closed permanently. Uh, also in the winter, it's coming up really soon, the uh, water attractions in Islands of Adventure like Popeyes, Ripsaw Falls, and River Adventure in Jurassic Park uh, all temporarily closed for refurbishment. So I would just again double check and make sure your favorite attraction isn't going to be closed or if it is, at least you know going into it you can enjoy some of the other attractions around the park. I will say I'm saving what in my opinion is the biggest mistake for last, so make sure you stay for the biggest mistake. This mistake is so big that I wouldn't even wish it upon my worst enemy. I don't have a worst enemy, but if I had a worst enemy, I wouldn't wish it upon this person. It's a huge mistake. So you, you, you can't make any of these mistakes, but particularly that mistake I wouldn't make. Interactive wands can be kind of fickle. Uh, so you buy one and of course you're casting spells, especially if you have a family and you drop the wand or something like that, it could break uh, and not work anymore. Um, so even if you just scratch it a little bit, they can stop working. So one mistake to avoid is you don't necessarily have to purchase another wand if your uh, interactive wand stops working. Of course you can if you collect wands or something like that, but if you're, if you're buying one just because your first one stopped working, you can actually take it to Ollivander's and they will repair it for you. Uh, so Ollivander is uh, happy to repair broken wands. That's my next uh, tip slash mistake. Don't purchase an extra wand just because yours stopped working. Sticking with the Wizarding World mistakes to avoid, I'm in front of Sugar Plums, the sweet shop in Diagon Alley, and then there's of course Honey Dukes over in Hogsmeade. Uh, both shops and other areas in the Wizarding World sell chocolate frogs, and of course a chocolate frog comes with a chocolate uh, frog trading card, and throughout the year they release new uh, trading cards in these chocolate frog boxes. However, so that people who have actively collected previous cards know, they put a star on the back of the packages for the new trading card. So if you're new to the parks and you're trying to get a variety of trading cards, I've actually seen people purchase like four uh, chocolate frog boxes that all have stars on the back, which means you're all going to get the same new wizard card. So if you're looking for uh, a variety and you're trying to collect them all, you definitely want to get uh, a lot without the star and then just one with the star on the back to make sure you get the, or the best chance at a variety possible. One more Diagon Alley mistake to avoid. Don't miss, this one sounds kind of silly, but it's possible to do. Don't miss uh, Nocturne Alley. So when you enter Diagon Alley, on your left will be Nocturne Alley. And it's definitely an area you should check out. It's one of my favorite areas at Universal Studios. So I would 100% recommend checking it out. Another mistake I see guests make when they visit is they skip some of the smaller shows or all the shows. So for example, Horror Makeup is behind me in Hollywood at Universal Studios Florida. And in my opinion, it's one of the best shows here. So I would 100% make time out of your day for Horror Makeup show. Just down the road is the Born Stuntacular. That's another one. That's the newest show at Universal. And it is really, really good. It replaced Terminator. Uh, both of these are one of my favorite shows personally, and they also perform really well satisfaction-wise overall. So I would 100% make time for both of them during your visit. You can use the Universal app to find the show times or just go outside the entrance of Horror Makeup Show and they have all the show times on, on a board here. This may be my most controversial tip to avoid, but I'm gonna say it and you know, not everybody agrees with me and I will say it doesn't apply with every situation either. Um, so keep that in mind. But I would say avoid, in a lot of cases, staying off site. So we have internal data that shows people are less satisfied when they stay off site. And generally speaking, Universal has a price point for most everybody at this point. So whether you're looking for a value property like Endless Summer or you know one of the more high-end properties like Hard Rock, I would consider staying on site. Um, there's lots of different options. The higher end, so if you're at like Sapphire, you're at Hard Rock, 
um, anything like that, um, you actually have a water taxi that can take you to and from your hotel, or you can walk. Hard Rock's only a couple minutes away, but you can see the water taxi behind me, uh, and that's a nice, gentle ride at the end of the evening, opposed to having to walk back to your car and then drive back to your uh, hotel room, you know, wherever it is in Orlando. So that would be my recommendation. I will say, you know, for everybody, it might not make sense. You know, there's definitely some situations where, you know, you're going to stay off off-site, and that's okay. Uh, but for a lot of guests, I would strongly consider staying on site. It's a little chilly for me today, but the next tip to avoid is to not skip Volcano Bay. Volcano Bay is Universal's water theme park. Uh, it's got both thrills and chills, as they say. So the chill stuff is like on Waturi Beach, you can lounge uh, and enjoy, you know, kind of the wave pool or, you know, just sit back and enjoy a drink. Whereas they also have like the Koakiri Body Plunge or uh, Krakatoa Aqua Coaster, which is a little bit more intense, uh, particularly the Body Plunge. Uh, that was a one and done for me. But anyway, I would recommend checking it out on your visit. You know, you could spend a day relaxing on the beach or you could spend half the day, you know, on the more thrilling water slides. You know, you do have to be interested in water parks, in my opinion, to be able to really fully enjoy Volcano Bay, but it's worth checking out. Uh, it's, it's a really cool environment. Uh, and it's kind of a different world. Like you enter the park and you see the big volcano. It's a really cool environment. I definitely recommend giving it a shot. So my next thing to avoid is only going to the most popular restaurants. So of course there's things like Three Broomsticks, uh, Leaky Cauldron, things like that. But there's also a lot of restaurants that are kind of more off the beaten path. Uh, so one example is Breadbox. That's where I'm having lunch today. It's a quick service restaurant. It's usually less busy. So if you're visiting during a busy time, it's a good idea as well. But the food is really good. To me, the prices are, are pretty good for a theme park. So uh, overall, I definitely recommend checking out, you know, Breadbox. Big Fire is more along the main path, but I still feel like it's one that's not everybody's talking about. Everybody's kind of talking about Tucson. So Big Fire is another, that's a full service restaurant that I would check out in City Walk. Um, I really like the pork tenderloin there. If you're planning on visiting a peak restaurant or even a snack like Voodoo Donuts, I would strongly recommend not going during peak times, especially if you're visiting during a busier time of year. Um, something like Voodoo Donuts, like right when the park closes, not a good idea whatsoever. Um, it's currently a noon. There is hardly anyone at Voodoo Donuts. So if you're if you're thinking of getting a Voodoo doll or one of the other, my personal favorite is a bacon maple bar. Um, I definitely would recommend not going first thing in the morning and not going right when the uh, park closes. Uh, something like now around noon, you can just walk right in, order your donut. If you do have to visit during one of the more peak times, they do have mobile ordering. Um, so you can use the Universal app and mobile order your donuts. Uh, but again, it's not gonna be as fast as just going in the middle of the day. So just a midday donut break would be my recommendation. Uh, avoid going right in the morning or right in the evening. I know I've shared quite a few mistakes already, but I still have a few more to share with you. We're gonna head inside Universal's Islands of Adventure and I'm gonna share a couple more, including, in my opinion, the biggest mistake you can make when you visit Universal Orlando. Let's head inside. The next mistake I see is actually at the gift shops. So a lot of people wait till the very end of the night. The last thing they do is go to the front gift shop like this one at Islands of Adventure or the studio store at Universal Studios. And I personally wouldn't do that. That's when they're busiest. I mean, sometimes they are. During the summer, they're jam-packed. But even in off times, they you know they have a pretty long line at the end of the night. Whereas if you go in the middle of the day, there won't be a line. Uh, you can send your packages to the front um, or to the City Walk store in City Walk to pick up at the end of the night. Or if you're staying on site and you're not checking out the next day, you can send them back to your room. Both of those are much better options, in my opinion, than going at the end of the night and just shopping and then purchasing and then trudging it home. I think it'll add like 30 minutes onto the end of your night where you could just kind of avoid that with this tip. So this one sounds a little bit more mean, but personally, if I wasn't looking for a timeshare, and most of you probably watching aren't looking for a timeshare, I'd probably avoid the vacation information uh, booths. There's one in Marvel here, there's one in Jurassic Park, and there's one near Men in Black. Personally, again, if you're not looking for a timeshare, I probably wouldn't bother talking to them. If you are looking for a timeshare, definitely stop by and say hello. I can only speak for myself, but personally, it drives me absolutely crazy if I get wet socks. Like, I cannot walk around a theme park with wet socks. So with that in mind, if you're planning on riding any of the water attractions here, like Ripsaw Falls or uh, Popeye and Bluto's Bold Rat Barges, or over in Jurassic Park, there's Jurassic Park River Adventure, any of those attractions, your feet may get damp or you know, you're know you likely to get soaked. Um, so I would consider bringing a change of clothes or at least a change of socks uh, so that you can stay dry and continue walking around the theme park afterwards. Speaking of water rides and rain, uh, depending on when you're visiting, uh, rain might be a factor in your trip, especially in the summer. Almost every afternoon it rains for a couple hours, particularly thunderstorms. Um, I've seen a lot of people that like really, really pay close attention to the weather and you know they look like 10 days out and they're looking every day. 
and every day the chance of rain goes up and it really bumps them out. My personal opinion, Florida, it's very rare for it to rain all day. Um, so I would just plan on a little bit of rain and just make it part of your trip opposed to really worrying about it or really thinking like it's going to ruin your trip. And with the water rides, you know, sometimes water rides are more fun in the rain. Roller coasters will stay open in a little rain. It's just when it starts uh, thundering is when the roller coaster shut down. By the way, I would say Thunder Falls Terrace is another restaurant that kind of falls into that category I was talking about where it's maybe a little less popular, but just as good as the other restaurants. It's actually one of my favorites at Owls of Adventure. It has a very similar menu to Three Broomsticks, although they've recently added kind of some rice bowls, which I really enjoy as well. So the biggest mistake I see people make at Universal, this is, sounds simple, but it could be like a tragic ending to your vacation. If there's an attraction you are most excited about, like for example, Velocicoaster, I would not save that for the very end of your visit. I see a lot of people who they're like, okay, you know, I really want to ride Velocicoaster, but I'm going to wait until the line's, uh, you know, shorter at the end of the night and it's the last night of your trip. Uh, if there's inclement weather or if there was a technical delay, you might not even get to ride Velocicoaster at all, for example, or Hagrid or you know, whatever you're most excited about. So I wouldn't necessarily go first thing in the morning, you could, but I wouldn't go at the very end of the day for the attractions you're most excited for, for your first ride. Velocicoaster is really fun at night. I have a video where I talk about Velocicoaster day versus night. So you can check that out and I'll leave a link. But uh, otherwise I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, saving it for the very end of the night. Also another mistake, this isn't the biggest one, but it's just kind of a bonus tip, uh, is I see a lot of people um, not pick the right number of days for their trip, you know, whether it's one, two, or three days. Uh, so I have another video about that, which I'll share. I'll share here as well, where we talk about uh, how many days is the perfect amount of days for your universal trip. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed watching. If I missed any mistakes, or if you've made a mistake on your first trip, leave it in the comment below and help others. And I'll see you in the next video.